In this video, we're going to look at setting up and solving linear equations. Let's look at an example of a linear equation. 2x minus 1 is equal to 5 is a linear equation. Our unknown is to the first power. If we had, for example, 3x squared minus 1 is equal to 16, this is a quadratic as we have an x squared term. If we had now 4x cubed plus x minus 1 equals 0, this is a cubic equation as we have a power of 3. So when we're talking about linear equations, the unknown or variable is just to the first power. What we're going to do is look at some wordy questions and set up equations and solve them given certain information. In this one, it says the dimensions of a square and a rectangle given in the two diagrams. If their areas are equal, A, calculate the value of x, and B, calculate their areas. So we've got a square, x plus 1, x plus 1, x plus 1, and x plus 1. We've got a rectangle, x minus 2, and then x plus 7.6. Often with these types of questions, it's good just to write things out and set things up. For this one, it's not as important, but in later examples, just keeping a track of what we're doing is really important. So let's start off with the square. So I can say now that the area is going to be the length times by the width. I'm going to call the area A, and we're going to have x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1, or if you like, x plus 1 all squared. If we now look at the rectangle, so the rectangle, we have on here now an area, and that is going to be the same as this one, so I can write that the area is going to be now the x minus 2 multiplied by the x plus 7.6. It doesn't matter which way around I put these, as we're going to multiply them. 2 times by 3 is, of course, 3 times by 2. So what I can now state is that these two areas are equal. So we can say now that x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1, or if you like, x plus 1 all squared, will be equal to x minus 2 multiplied by x plus 7.6. To begin with, this looks like a quadratic equation. Once we expand it out, though, we will see that the x squareds will cancel. So expanding, I'm going to multiply x by x, I'm going to multiply x by the 1, I'm going to multiply the 1 by the x, and the 1 by the 1. So what we can state now is the following. We can say now on the left-hand side, x squared plus x plus x, which is plus 2x, plus 1 will be equal to, and expanding on the right-hand side, x squared plus 7.6x minus 2x, which is plus 5.6x, and then we're going to have now minus 2 lots of 7.6, which is minus 15.2. So from here, we can see now that both x squares cancel. So this is not a quadratic equation. It's a linear equation, as now we have x to the power of 1. I'm going to add 15.2 to both sides and subtract 2x. So on the left-hand side, 16.2 is going to be equal to 3.6x. So I've just added the 15.2 to both sides, subtracted 2x from both sides. So we can say now that 16.2 divided by 3.6 is going to give us x. What's that going to be? 4.5? 4.5 .5 is equal to x. So let's go ahead and just check that on the calculator. So we've got now 16.2. So 16.2 divided by 3.6. And that's going to give me now 9 over 2 or 4.5. So we solve for x. That isn't answering the question, though. Often students go ahead and solve for the unknown, but don't actually answer the question. So if I just bring back my square and my rectangle, we know that these have now equal areas. So if we've got x is equal to 4.5, this length right here is going to be 5.5. This one right here is going to be 5.5. So the area is going to be 5.5 multiplied by 5.5, which is 5.5 squared, which is going to give us 30.25, and that will be centimetres squared. Again, if you want to do that on a calculator, 5.5 times 5.5, or 5.5 squared, will give us now the 30.25. Um, if you're wondering how to do half squared, it's relatively straightforward. So if we've got 5.5 squared, multiply 5 by 6, so the whole number, or integer either side, and add 0.25 on. So for example now, if we did 1.5 squared, the answer is going to be 2.25. So if we look at that, 1.5 squared, the answer is 2.25. All I would need to do is 1 times by 2, so the number either side of it, and then add the 0.25 on. So from here, we can see now it's 
If you wanted to do 6.5 squared, this is going to give us now 42.25. So if, uh, 6.5 squared, let's square that. Uh, so this is going to give us 42.25 because it's 6 times by 7, which is 42, plus the 0.25. Uh, and there we go. So it kind of looks impressive, but in reality, it's fairly logical. OK, so let's look at this one. Now, this one should be 30.25 again. So this is going to be now x minus 2, which is 2.5. And then we're going to have on this one, if I add now the 4.5, that's going to give me 12.1. So if I do now 2.5 times 12.1, that will give me 30.25 as well. And we knew that these were equal to each other. We just had to show them. So, for example, now if you ask the next part, show the perimeter or find the perimeter of each, just sub it in and add them up. So, quite a nice little question to start with and nothing majorly, uh, majorly out of order. Three numbers are added together. The second number is six more than the first number and the third number is 15 less than the first number. In part A, if the second number is x, write down in terms of x the value of each of the other two numbers. I'm going to draw a little table. We certainly don't need to do it for this one, but often when you draw a table, it makes, makes your workings a lot easier if you're dealing with multiple calculations. So what I'm going to have, I'm going to have the first number, so this is the first, this is going to be the second, and this is going to be the third. We're told now that the middle number is x. The uh, second number is 6 more than the first number. So if I think about this one, this is going to be x minus 6. If this was 10... This would be 10 minus 6, which gives us 4. If you're ever struggling with these algebra problems, just use numbers. It's common sense to just sub some numbers in, substitute numbers in, and see if it makes logical sense. Okay, let's have a look at this one. The third number is 15 less than the first number. So the first number is x minus 6. So we need to take another 15 off that. So this is going to be x minus 21. So that's what I've got just here. So all we've done is written them down. In part B, it says the three numbers are added together. Write down a simplified expression for the total of the three numbers. So what we have then is the x minus 6 plus the x plus the x minus 21. I can see now that I've got x plus x plus x, which is 3x. I've got negative, so minus 6 and then minus 21. So we're going to have minus 27. So that is an expression. An expression is just a collection of terms. An equation will have an equal sign in it. In part C, it says if the sum of the numbers is 93, what are the three numbers? All we need to do is set this equal. So we can say that 3x minus 27 will be equal to 93. Adding 27 to both sides, 3x is going to be equal to 120. Dividing both sides by 3x is going to be equal to 40. At this stage, again, students just solve the equation for x. They don't sometimes answer the question. It's not asking me to solve for x. It's asking me what are the three numbers. Well, if x is 40, this one is 40 minus 6, which is 34. This one is x, which is 40. And this is x minus 21, which is going to give 19. 34 plus 40 plus 19 must be equal to 93, which it is to hold up just there. So let's just look at it now. Think about this reasonably. Read it out to yourself. Second number is going to be 6 more than first. The third number is 15 less than the first. So don't, don't get caught up in the wording. Just write it out and then jot it down. As stated, didn't need a table here, but in some examples you might just to keep on top of your work. A wine merchant has X bottles of wine in a shop and Y bottles in a cellar. She transfers a quarter of the bottles from the cellar to the shop. In part A, how many bottles does she now have? One in the shop and two in the cellar. So let's just write this out. You might, again, think a table isn't required, and that's perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is look at the shop. So I'm going to say this is the start. So what we've got then is the start. So at the start, we've got the shop, and we have the cellar. In the shop, there are going to be now X bottles. X is just a number. We have Y bottles in the cellar. So X might be 10, Y might be 30, Y might be 100. So what we've now done is transferred one quarter of the bottles from the cellar to the shop. So what we'll have now is the transfer. What are we going to have in here? Well, we've still got the X, but we've got one quarter of these. So it's going to be X plus one quarter 
of however many we had in the cell. So if we think if we had y was equal to 40, then what we would do is put 10 in the shop and we would retain 30 in the cell. So this would be 10 over 40, which of course is 1 quarter. This would be 30 over 40, which of course is 3 quarters. Therefore, we can write that we have 3 quarters of y left in the cell. So all I'm doing is just writing this out. You might not need to, but uh, hopefully it's making sense of what we've got. OK, so that's done. Let's go on to the next bit. She now finds that she has twice as many bottles in the cellar as she has in the shop. In part B, we need to write down an equation linking x and y and simplify it. So what we'll have now, and I'll just put here twice. So this is the stage where twice as many. This is where the killer error comes in with many students. I'm going to write this out, and I'm going to say now that 2x, so what we're going to have here now is 2x plus 1 quarter y, so just jotting this down, and we're going to have 3 quarters of y. Why have I done this? Well, what we've got now is twice as many bottles in the cellar. So let's say now we had 10 in the, the shop. How many would we need in the cellar? The answer is 20, and that's going to be two lots of this. So all I've done is said two lots of what's in the shop must be what's in the cellar. Often students go the other way. So what we can say from here is that two lots of what's in the shop must be equal to what's in the cellar. So we now need to simplify this. So expanding the brackets, we're going to have 2x plus 2 over 4, which is going to be 1 half y, and that's going to be equal to 3 quarters y. I'm going to subtract 1 half y from both sides. So 2x is going to be equal to 1 quarter of y. And if we wanted, we could multiply both sides by 4, and we can say that 8x is equal to y, or y is equal to 8x. So that's what we've got. Um, and it's, it's fairly logical. All we've done is simply said two lots of this. And I can understand how that could be um, quite challenging, but hopefully that makes sense. So don't get caught up in saying, well, twice as many in the cellar. We need twice as many of these to meet this one. OK, so that's done. That's simplified. If she had uh, originally had 2,000 bottles in the shop, how many has she all together? So she originally had X in the shop. So what we can say at this stage then is that X is going to be equal to 2,000. That was what she had originally. So if we look here, we know that Y is equal to 8X. So Y is equal to 8 lots of X, which is 2,000. So that's going to give me now on here that Y is going to be equal to 16,000. 8 times 2,000 is 16,000. Uh, sorry, 16, what have we got on here? So 16,000, 8 times by 2,000 is 16,000. So we can say now that the total, remember she started with x plus y, total is equal to x plus y, so we can say that's going to be now the 2,000 plus the 16,000, which of course gives us now 18,000. So she has 18,000 bottles in total. So just setting it up, we can go from there. Okay, let's have a look at another one. For the annual village fate, the vicar orders 250 bottles of drink drinks bottles of drinks he orders x bottles of lemonade and the remainder of cola bottles of lemonade cost 35 ph and bottles of cola cost 38 ph he spends 91 pounds 70 altogether in part a we need to write down in terms of x the number of bottles of cola he bought okay let's just let's just set this up and again you don't need this uh, but you might want to put this on so what we're going to have then is the following I've got now two things. I've got lemonade and I've got cola. So I'll put lemonade and then cola. So he's now ordered X bottles of lemonade. So this is now the number of bottles. Well, this is going to be X. The remainder of uh, cola. So we had now 250. So this is going to be the remainder will be 250 minus this one. So let's say he bought now, let's just say he bought 100 lemonade. Well, what he's going to have then is 250 minus 100 cola which of course is going to give us now 150. So this is the number, he's got X of these, so if the remainder are cola, then it's 250 minus X. Okay, so what we need to do is write down in terms of X the number of bottles of cola he bought, it's 250 minus X. We need to write down an equation for the total cost of bottles, 
and uh, from, from it calculate the values of x or calculate value of x. So let's now look now at an expression for the cost of each one. So if we look now, what we've got, and we need to be careful here, this is 35p and this is in pounds. So lemonade, the cost is going to be, uh, the total of lemonade will be 35x, and then we're going to have 38, 250 minus x. So this is the cost now of each. That is the cost of the lemonade. That is going to be the cost of the cola. So 35p for every one of these, we buy 38p for every one of these. So what we can write then, then is that whatever he's going to get, 35 lots of x plus 38 lots of 250 minus x must be equal to 9170 pence. So this is what we end up with. So what we've got then is this equation, and we can go ahead and look at uh, expanding the brackets and tidying up. So we've got now 35x plus 38 times by 250. Let's just do that. So 38 times by 250. And that's going to give me now on there 9,500. So 9,500 minus now the 38x. So 38x is equal to 9170. So if we tidy this up, what we're going to have then is on this side, and I suppose we can we can add entirely up to you on how you want to solve this. What I've got is minus 3x is going to be equal to the 9170 minus now the 9500. So if you want to do it this way, you can do. Um, so what's that going to give us? That's going to give us now 330. So we can say negative 3x is equal to negative 330. So dividing both sides by negative 3, that's going to give us x is 110. You didn't have to do it that way. What you could have done is added the 38x to both sides, subtracted the 35x, and then subtracted the 9170. I think if you're not too confident with the algebra, it would have been easier to go that way. Um, but either way, what we end up with, if we just do that, so what we've got now, 9170 minus the 9,500, and we're going to now divide that by the 3, or negative 3, I should say, and that will give us the value of x. So that's 110. So if we go back here, we can see now that the lemonade, so lemonade was equal to 110 bottles. Therefore, the cola is going to be the 250 minus the 110, which, of course, is going to give us the 140. These must, of course, equal up to 250. How many bottles of cola did he buy? Well, the answer is going to be 110. Uh, sorry, 140. How many bottles of lemonade did he buy? 110. So there we go, setting up and solving linear equations. Sometimes the wording is quite tough, but hopefully that's given you a good start.